Greetings and welcome once again to the Gaming Codex, the show where I try to explain to you all the various terms and words used to describe video games and the video games industry in general. And today we have two terms that are intrinsically linked. They are Eurojank and Slavklunk. According to the general-ish definition, these are words to describe games made in Europe or the former USSR that tend to be more ambitious than the abilities of the developer to properly deliver on the promise, leading to numerous glitches and particularities that range from game-breaking to charming. They are not what you would call probably the most popular terms ever used to describe video games, but they have seen an increase in popularity in recent months. Especially with the success of more Eurocentric video games in the mainstream market like Kingdom Come Deliverance and Elix. When you play games like these, you sort of know where they were made, because they have certain traits to them. There are ways of identifying these games because they may have an abundant use of depth of field in places where it shouldn't, and I mean super depth of field, to offset the fact that most of the characters look exactly alike and that physics usually tends to have some problems. But more importantly, they are games made where they were made. They have a cultural tie to the places where they were created, and that is part of their charm. That is part of what they are, even when what they are is games where you're going on a tropical island to kill drug lords or mutants or something, or going to space. You still know where they were made and by whom, because there's particularities to the design that sort of feed into that idea. For example, in most of these games you start off as incapable of killing a rat, usually, but through a lot of lot of side missions, side quests, and numerous arduous tasks, you become so absurdly powerful that you can just wipe the floor with everything. I know that you may think that that's what every RPG does, or every game with a progression does, but if you put that in the context of something like Gothic, you sort of understand that the Gothic's not gonna be like every other RPG. Neither will Elex, neither will Stalker. I know some people call Stalker an RPG, but it, it, it's kinda not. It's just Stalker. I mean, there is no level progression which is intrinsically tied to what we call an RPG. To put it another way, you can think of Eurochunk games as something that was published by Joe Wood, or would have been published by Joe Wood back in the day, or by 1C Company. Kind of low budget games that are generally Janky as hell in many many places, they have numerous bugs, probably fell to launch, you'll inadvertently follow the map somehow, you'll get stuck in doors, the enemies will start flying around for no reason, but there's a charm to them, like they actually have something to them, uh, unless we're talking about something made by CI Games, in which case everything tries to be Call of Duty. And they're still Eurojank, they're still janky as hell, but they are more on the inferior side of the, well it's not a genre, it's, it's a species I would say of games. Now what would be the popular definition for Eurojank and Slavklank? Well that would be, what? The majority of the public doesn't really have a proper knowledge of these species of video games, which is why I'm going to go to the Dave Osh definition for the difference between of them. And that would be that Eurojank runs into trees and flies into the air, and Slav Clunk squats and falls through the map. They're sort of like the same thing, because the basis of them is that they're made by people with a lot of passion for video games, with no budget, and honestly, maybe not a superb grasp of what they're actually trying to do. So that's why you'll get games like Xenos, like Precursors, like a lot of games you probably never heard of, made in Russia, made in Ukraine, made in Poland, I'm not sure, but I think Belarus has made some games, probably. I would say even Romania, but we have so very, very few games with actual local identity that it's it's kind of hard to call them Slav, Kalank or Eurojank. Because in a way, if you look at Ghost Recon Wildlands, there is some Eurojank in there and it's quite visible. And that game was made primarily in Romania. But it's got too much of a brand to it to be Eurojank, to be Slav, Kalank. It's 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 not obscure enough. Now, Secret Service in Harm's Way, which is 17 years old now, yeah, that. That is absolutely well fitting in this definition. Even though it was a game where you were part of the Secret Service and you weren't, you know, in uh, this area of the world, it was still Slav Clunky and Eurojanky. Which I can say because, you know, Romania used to be part of both. Well, it is part of one at least. The European Union and well, Europe the continent. It was always part of Europe the continent. And so is Russia, part of the Europe continent. But in the USSR grand scheme of things, it used to be... Let's just hope it stays that way. Now what would be the marketing definition for 
Slav Clunk and Hero Chang will that would be. We'd call them Bethesda likes, but Bethesda would sue us. Now the thing is, it's not really all that uncommon for games to have a butt ton of janky bugs in them. AAA Studios able to spend more money on a five minute intro than what some of the other studios would spend on five games do also tend to have a lot and a lot, a lot of bugs. Going back to what I said earlier about uh, Ghost Recon Wildlands, pretty much every Ubisoft game also has problems. Not saying it's because they employ a lot of Romanian developers, but uh, this is where the QA takes place. And yet, because they're AAA developers, because they're gigantic companies with huge names and lots and lots of marketing, they're, well, honestly, they're given a pass. People do criticize the bugs, but they're they're met with more endearment. Whereas when it's a European or Russian or Ukrainian developer, things tend to be a bit more harsh. Because they're coming basically from nothing, nobody out there to put out the good word. And let's face it, the gaming industry and a lot of the gaming press is very America central. So everything is seen through the lens of Americans. So explaining to them why some bugs are may not be the worst possible when it's a game with the depth and complexity of Gothic or or stalker may be a bit difficult I mean to the public at large because if you're you're actually a gamer and you you've played games over your life and you for, you're familiar with these games with the genres it's not a problem for you but for the general public for the Call of Duty crowd it will be and if you want to see more about that check out the uh, video I did about cultural differences in games from like two years ago well what's important to note is that Slav Klunk and Eurojank are now sort of entering the main stage because the games are successful and they've been successful for a while Stalker was a big hit at least here and Metro was uh, well Metro had a benefit of a triple A publisher and now they're technically in Malta so it's uh, Mediterranean funk I'm I don't know what that game's gonna be but we'll see we'll see so close this is another edition of the gaming Codex. come back next time and we will talk about a brand new subject goodbye